Good morning friends. In this video, we are going to see some important HPC interview questions which are related to HAP cooling load calculation, design and installation. So let's start the video. So the first question is how to decide the infiltration rate in HAP software. Is this compulsory to add the infiltration rate? Because in the HAP software, when it comes to spaces, there will be one option like infiltration. Here you have to provide the infiltration value in add change per hour. So this is one of the important thing because high infiltration rate will give both the sensible and cooling load in a very high amount. So let's see some uh, international standard requirement, then the practical case which I do normally and secondly some local standard reference also together. So the first thing uh, for the standard reference, you can see the CIPC, CIPC that is a Chartered Institution of Building Service Engineer. So in he, uh, in this one, in this reference, you can see the different air change per hour uh, reference for different building. For example, uh, if you go to the canteens and dining room, the air change per hour, normally we follow one air change per hour. Same uh, Similarly for the fire station 0 0.5 to 1, for the hospital with the different rooms, they have given different air change per hour. So and also the warehouses, they have given the industrial project, the restaurant, library. So for the different uh, rooms, they have given very clearly the air change per hour recommendation. And uh, this is the CIPC requirement. Additionally, most of the lo uh, local standard, for example, if you see the Abu Dhabi sustainability requirement, SGDAMA, they have recommended that maximum infiltration rate of 0 0.35 should be considered for the buildings. So based on the different application, you can follow SIPC requirement or if your local code has any sustainability requirement, that also you can follow. But coming to the practical thing, what I do normally? In practical experience, to optimize the cooling load and also consequently the power consumption, infiltration of 0.25 air change per hour shall be considered for rooms with the glass exposure. Because if you have the glasses, there will be lots of infiltration will happen through the ceiling, uh, through the gap and everything. So 0.1 air change per hour for solid wall room near the building envelope and 0.35 air change per hour for main building entrance. So this is what normally I do uh, for the practical experience based on the practical experience. So if you want to follow SIPC, you can follow this with CRC because some people normally keep very high uh, infiltration rate like a 2 and 3 uh, which is a very high which will make high sensible and latent load in the HAP output which is not required. So based on the rooms requirement, you can uh, you can reduce and increase the air change per hour requirement. And coming to the next question. It is, should I provide the values in outside air ventilation requirement for all the condition? When it comes to the HAP software, cooling load software, uh, this is one of the important requirement to add the outside air ventilation requirement. So here the space usage will be there, different application will be displayed at this point. So in some so in some cases we will activate this section and some cases it will not be activated, but we need to know the exact reason why it is required. So when it comes to the answer, if FAHU units, fresh air handling units supply the treated air, treated air to the building, it is not required to activate this section. This section means if you have the FAHU, then no need to activate this outside air ventilation requirement section. But if you don't have the FAHU, if untreated air is supplied, for example, you have the fan coil unit in the room, for different rooms you have the fan coil unit and the untreated air is supplied to the room. Then what happened? Uh, we need to provide the, we need to activate this section because outside load will be added with the system. So this section must be activated when doing the half cooling load calculation. And the next question is, we have a project where different room indoor temperatures should be maintained and because of that we have installed the VAV. So in that project, the air handling unit supplies the air to the VAV and from VAV the air supplies to the different rooms. So under partial load in the room, for example, when you have the VAV selection, you can see the minimum and maximum flow is mentioned in the VAV. So here the question is, under partial load in the room, large pressure differential between the branches are observed, thereby it generates an out of balance system system with a large difference in branch pressure drop and the air flow. So normally for every project we will do proper air balancing at the end of the as a part of the commissioning to balance the system and uh, apart from that one in the as a designer point of view we have to keep something uh, related to the design that is what I explained as an answer here that should be designed and installed to create a total system the overall system with as near as possible symmetrical branches or at least with the equal pressure drop. So this type of system is easy to balance and uh, it keep balanced as loads with the system vary along with the associated airflow. So whenever there is a varying in the system, uh, in the spaces because of the temperature difference, temperature varying, so this will keep balance when loads within the system vary along with the associated airflow. So duct system with the branches 
that have a very wide reference in pressure differential will not stay balanced and it will create large variation in CFM flow from branch to branch. To avoid this thing, when we go for the designing, we try to keep the design to try to uh, make a design like uh, as, as near as possible symmetrical branches are at least with the equal pressure drop. Next question is which terminal velocity should be followed when selecting the diffuser. For example, here this is the catalog for the square diffuser. So here you can see we have the four way diffuser catalog and they have given dif uh, different throw distance 0 0.9 at 0 0.9 meter, 1.2 meter, 1.8 meter at different terminal velocity. So the question is which terminal velocity should I follow. Normally, the throw data is usually presented at a terminal velocity of 150 feet per minute or 0.75 meter per second or 0.5 meter per second and 0.25 meter per second. Generally, outlets should be selected so that the throw at 50 feet per minute or 0.25 meter per second terminal velocity equals the required room throw that is A plus B. For example, the total height here is, uh, sorry, from here to here. It is 10 feet, for example, and the occupied zone means normally we keep the occupied zone as 6 feet. So, 10 minus 6, it will be 4 feet. So, the B should be 4 feet and coming to the A, the A should be measured from here to the end, I mean the extreme end. Let's say it is 7 feet. So, 7 feet plus 4 feet. So, total throw distance should be 11 feet. So, this 11 feet will be selected at 0 0.25 meter per second terminal velocity to match the, uh, to, match, to make the room very comfortable. Here the concept is the diffuser should not uh, make the throw directly on the occupied zone. It will make very uncomfortable. So this is area is called as a occupied zone. Occupied zone means a constant value. It's a six feet zone. It's called as a occupied zone from the bottom level. So the air diffuser must not throw the air inside the occupied zone. And, and also the air diffusers are designed in a way that the blades will throw the air like this way only. Both the side like this way. So we have to select. Uh, the terminal velocity is 0.25 meter per second and we have to match the throw also. For example, I have given here uh, three different terminal velocity from the diffuser. You can see the red one, uh, 150 feet per minute, the green one, 100 feet per minute and uh, finally the blue one, it is 50 feet per minute. So normally, so normally from the diffuser, the air will come at a very low temperature. So after this, when it comes to this point, it, the total air is at room temperature at this point. This is at 50 feet per minute terminal velocities. This is why that normally the selection is based on 50 feet per minute. The next one is terminal boxes, VAV terminal boxes are diffuser which generate large amount of noise even though they appear to be designed and installed in accordance with all air system guidelines. So in this image you can see we have shown you the diffuser example as an example. So we need to see one important thing. As per Ashley 70, diffusers are tested in different cases. The first one is case one, straight rigid duct, uh, rigid inlet duct to the diffuser. For example, if you have the diffuser here, so the back side they will keep the straight rigid duct. Okay, there is no there is no flexible duct. This is rigid duct, and the full flow will be given. So this time there will be low pressure drop and lowest sound. That means whatever the pressure drop of the diffuser is considered as, as it is because there is no other accessories are involved. So data from this condition is normally published in the technical data set. Okay. And coming to the next one, this case two, the same arrangement, but we will install the opposite blade damper is added uh, with the fully open condition. This is very important, fully open condition. So this damper will increase the sound level NC 1 to 5. So earlier it was only NC, that is the actual noise level which is generated because of the diffuser. In the second case, they will add the opposite blade damper. So because of this one, along with the normal NC, there will be 1 to 5 increment will be there in the sound. And coming to the coming to the third case, again the diffuser will be here. So in this case, what happened? Earlier it was a rigid duct, but now this time it will be like a flexible duct. So they will install the flexible duct after some distance from the damper. So here the case is if the distance is three equal and diameter of the duct, sound added is between zero to one NC only to the baseline data. For example, if the if the duct dia is hundred mm, then this should be three into hundred. For example, this should be 300 mm. So if it is 300 mm, the noise level added is very low. That is only 0 to 1. But when this distance is reduced, for example, it is like a 0, then the noise value will be increased 6 to 9 NC. So this is the common case in most of the site because of the classes with other utilities and other services. We normally reduce this uh, flexible duct uh, installation. It will make the high NC level. Uh, and also what happened coming to the fourth cases you can see here. So same as the add case, but here again we are adding the damper. 
for the controlling volume control damper we are adding here so when three equivalent diameter of the duct is not uh, followed the damper increases the sound only 5 to 8 but if it is not followed this equivalent distance then the, the damper uh, uh, flexible duct with the damper will increase the sound level 5 to 10 nc this is one of the important thing and because of the site issue this is what happening in most of the cases that's that's why it creates the uh, nc level higher and here an elbow placed too close to the terminal box or diffuser can increase the noise characteristics of installation as much as 20 decibel. So investigate making correction to the diffuser or terminal box inlet condition. So if the terminal box or the diffuser is oversized and the dampers have to be throttled very tightly, then it will it will avoid the noise to the system. For example, in the X direction, I have given percentage of opening for the damper throttling and Y direction I have given the noise generation in decibel. So if the damper throttling is fully open then there will not be much noise. If it is 75 percentage open you can see the uh, decibel uh, always like same like 50 percentage and say, uh, 25 percentage open you can see the decibel range it, it can go very higher value. So this condition should be uh, properly followed for the site installation. The next question is related to the HAP cooling load software calculation. When taking the dimension for the exposed wall, if the wall contains a door or windows, should it be included or excluded? For example, this is the exposed wall for the room number 4. So here we have one window also with the 2 by 2, four, uh, two, by two feet and the total length is 5.5 feet. The question is when I go for the exposed wall length which is from here to here, should I include this window length also or I should include the length only from here to here. So this is the question. So this is normally uh, some mistake happened in the half cooling load calculation. Here the first case is full exposed length of the wall must be included without excluding the window since window is in the exposed area and window dimensions are, are also added in the software so it will detect the value from overall dimension for example in our case the total length was 5.5 feet and window was here with a 2.2 feet so we must include the length from full length that is 5.5 feet and because in the exposed area we have the window also and the half software we will add the dimension of the window also that's why we have to provide the full length from here to here only the software will detect the length of this one when you provide the window dimension by mistake if you provide the length from here to here only and again you are adding the window dimension separately the software will detect the length from this dimension so this is not correct you have to provide the full exposure length and if you have wall or door uh, window or door whatever it is then that area particularly you have to enter in the software but you must not provide the length detecting that uh, window or door okay that is not correct and the next question also related to the half cooling load calculation here you can see the the spaces average ceiling height uh, 9 feet so this ceiling height for example this is the section of the room in this room we have uh, 3 meter height from uh, the bottom slab to the ceiling and also 600 mm height between the ceiling wide so when i go for this entry should i include this uh, 3000 mm or 600 mm together th uh, 3600 mm what is the correct answer i should add here so normally we have two cases to study here. So the first case what you see here we have proper uh, supplied duct and we have the diffuser which is supplied the air to the room and we have the proper return duct which uh, takes the air from the room to the unit. So in this case the air is properly uh, supplied and taken back. So if you have a cases like this then you have to consider the length or the, sorry, the height only from here to up to the ceiling level. But we have other cases also. And coming to the second case, we have the proper supply duct which is supplying the air to the room and coming to the return side, we don't have the return duct. This kit can be because of the uh, classes or to save the money. We don't have the return duct. We will provide one transfer duct here in the each room. So the air will be transferred to the center area and from here we have the common return plenum. So in this case, the air uh, from the room is going to the ceiling. So the load of the room as well as the, this space load also will be considered. So in this case, you have to consider the full ceiling height from here here to here okay for the cooling load calculation and the next question for the half cooling load calculation we normally add the safety factor with some percentage so the question is is this compulsory to add the safety factor for sensible and latent so normally the supply duct uh, has 55 uh, degree Fahrenheit or uh, 13 degree Celsius to 18 degree Celsius air flowing through it. So the duct may pass through the unconditioned space having higher temperature. This result in a heat gain 
to the duct before it reaches the space to be conditioned. This in effect reduces the cooling capacity of the conditioned air. To compensate for this, the cooling capacity of the air quantity must be increased. This heat gain is normally estimated as a percentage as an average of 1 to 5 percentage. So additionally, supply return air duct leakage loss because of the volume control damper and different dampers and also the heat gain from air condition fan horsepower and also the return air uh, leakage gain. So these are the things makes we must add the safety factors to some limit. So normally what happens, this safety factor is added like a sensible 10 percentage until latent 5 percentage. But there is another issue. The value which I told for the duct system, we have some additional system like a normal DX split unit system where we don't have any duct. For example, uh, in normal DX split unit installation, there are no ducts, only the discharge is, only the direct discharge is available. So in that case, we can reduce the safety factor. There is no need to keep the sensible factor of 10 percentage and latent factor 5 percent for this type of application where there is no duct. The next question is related to the half cooling load calculation. For example, we have a room here. Here I have one unit. So for this one, in this room, I want to keep 23 degrees Celsius as a comfort condition on coil temperature. So in the half soft thermostat, I added 23 degrees Celsius for the room temperature. So, but the half output result shows 27 degrees Celsius just for example. So is that correct or not? So here we have two important cases. The case one is for 23 degrees Celsius on coil temperature, if we add the untreated fresh air, that means as I mentioned here, if we activate this untreated fresh air, based on the fresh air temperature and flow, on coil HAP result will go high. And coming to the second case, if you don't have the untreated fresh air from the outside, whatever the thermostat value which you put earlier, that is 23 degrees Celsius, with the 23 degrees Celsius, plus maximum 1.5 degree increment will be there in the HAP output result. So this is the common one. So we have to see whether we are going with the case 1 or case 2 in for the same type of project. So in that project, if I put the, if I set the uncoil as 23 degrees Celsius, when I go to the HAP output, you can see maximum plus 1.5. So maximum 24.5 will be, will come like a HAP output. So if there is uh, properly treated air, if there is untreated air is given to the system, then it will be different. We will see that what is the value to, what is the formula to find out that one. So here one important term will come that is called as a mixed temperature. Mixed temperature means for example room return air, the air which is coming from the room with 24 degrees Celsius and 720 liter per second and 50 percent relative humidity for example. Inside the room that is what we are maintaining. So 24 degrees Celsius for example and 50 percent relative humidity with 720 liter per second. And the outside of fresh air for example let's say that uh, I am in the UAE region. So I want to consider 40, 46 degrees Celsius dry bulb temperature based on the Dubai Green Building Regulation for all the cooling load calculation. So the return fresh air, sorry the fresh air which is taken from the outside is for this room is uh, 100 liter per second just for example. So after the mixing the temperature will be like we have the formula outdoor temperature multiply with the outdoor flow plus indoor temperature indoor return temperature plus multiply with the indoor return flow divided by total flow. For example here outdoor temperature is here you can see 46 degrees Celsius outdoor temperature multiply with the outdoor flow. Outdoor flow means a fresh air flow which we are taking like 100 liter per second plus we have to consider indoor return temperature that is 24 degrees Celsius multiply with the return flow. Return flow is 720 liter per second divided by total flow that is 820. 720 plus 100 it is 820. So if you get the value, uh, if you apply the value, the final will be 26.68 degrees Celsius. So in this case, you are adding the outside air. So in this case, you are adding the outdoor air temperature. Also, you are adding the return air. So mixing up this one will give the new temperature of 26.68 degrees Celsius. For example, if you go to the FH with the heat recovery wheel, you can see this type of thing. After that, this will go to the cooling coil. So after the cooling coil, there will be off coil temperature. So the temperature changes will be there if you are adding the untreated air uh, from outside to the return air. So the on coil will go to the higher value, not the exact value as I told you plus 1.5 increment. That will not be possible if you are adding the outside untreated air. And I believe you learned something from the today interview question and I request your support to post more HVAC interview questions. So you can give your support by like and subscribe for this video. Thank you for watching the video. We will see you again with another interesting topic.